I think we've got it now. Uh, microphone thing always resets on this. Um, hello everyone and welcome to Blue Tengu's live game development show, where we show everything that goes into making a game from concept to completion. If you've ever wanted to make a game, we hope this will help lower the barrier to entry, maybe give you the nudge you need to try it yourself. Even if you don't want to make a game, we hope you'll find some value in what we're doing here. Uh, all of the information about where you can find us in the Twitch inf is in the Twitch info down below or um, in our YouTube profile for those of you who are catching us later on YouTube. Uh, but just in case, we're at uh, www.bluetengu.com. That's uh, B-L-U-E-T-E-N-G-U.com. Uh, B-Tengu on Twitter, Facebook, Blue Tengu Studio. Uh, YouTube.com, Blue Tengu Studio for those of you watching the live stream. And Twitch TV, Blue Tengu for those of you who are watching us later on YouTube. Uh, a little bit of advance warning, this is the first episode, uh, so there's going to be a lot more talking and a little less doing than in the future, but hang with me, it should be worth it. Uh, something about me, who I am, uh, I was born and raised in California, but came to Japan, where I live now, to work after graduation. Been living here ever since. Um, started out with programming and computer science, and my first job was a really, really boring programming job, but with a little luck, I managed to jump into the game industry, and I've been here for 10 years now, uh, doing scenario writing, level design, scripting, tool design, uh, localization, voice work, a little bit of everything. I've even had one of my horrible drawings end up in the game, so I guess I could kind of say I was an artist as well. So, um, first, why are we doing this? In particular, why am I doing this? Uh, there's three reasons. I want to demystify the development process uh, to show that if you've ever wanted to make a game, that's something you can do. Um, back when I was a, a kid, and I uh, see my brother in the chat there, <laughs> um, his Commodore 64, he taught me programming and a lot of things back then, and back then, when I was a kid, I thought maybe I could actually make a game, but as time went on, things got more complicated, and it just didn't seem like something I could do on my own, so it's, one, it's something I think everyone should be able to do, and there's a lot of good tools out there, especially now. Uh, things like Unity, Unreal, they're, they're really heating up the competition to grab, you know, the... I wouldn't say the the beginner, but I would say to grab, you know, people that don't have 100 people development studios. And the tools are only going to get better. So, uh, another reason. Beyond games, I want to show you that you can do anything, uh, that everyone had to start somewhere. All it takes is to get better at something, is to finish it. Uh, something I learned from trying my hand at writing is no matter how bad, finishing is more important than stopping well. Uh, the same applies to everything else. 
So once you do something, once you finish something, it creates antenna, like the one on, well, let's see if I can get my mirror right here, uh, Blue Tengu's head there. Uh, it opens your mind to absorbing experiences as a creator instead of a consumer. Once you start to make something, especially once you finish your first thing, you start to see the stuff you consume and you start to see why they made the decisions they did and it kind of feeds back into your own, you know, your own process. And, you know, your world kind of opens up from there. So it's really important to finish things, at least finish your first thing before getting too worried about editing and, you know, fixing things up. Uh, the third reason I wanted to do this was I want to make games, like I said. Uh, I've been in games for about a decade now, but never had the chance to make something I could call my own, to see it through from start to finish, to bring my own vision, my own ideas to life. I love uh, creating with my writing, and I like helping other people make games, so now I'm setting out to do it for my own. So, what is this show? Why this format? Uh, the live development show runs two hours a week. Uh, same time frame as now, hopefully, and has me attempting to show everything that goes into making a game, but it's not a tutorial, uh, so I should warn you about that ahead of time. It's what I hope to be more than that. If I wanted to make a tutorial, probably the best way to go about it would be to actually study and, you know, make something first, uh, put together a script, and then, you know, record that, put it up on YouTube, but I think there's value in seeing how someone came into their knowledge, too you know, how they came into their assumptions, how they came to their conclusions. Uh, because once someone has come into their assumptions and their conclusions, although they gain the knowledge, which is nice for teaching, uh, they lose something. They lose the ability to put themselves in their students' shoes. So, you know, everything becomes obvious to them. Uh, they unconsciously skip things, seemingly minor things, especially to them, but those minor things are what lose their students. So, the process I'm undertaking might take a little longer than a tutorial, but by showing everything I'm doing, including, you know, me getting confused and wondering what I should do next and looking it up on the web and everything else, um, you know, everything I'm learning, I think this will show, you know, something that tutorials can. I think this show should be able to do something that tutorials fail to do, and I think that's make you feel like you can do this too, because if this guy can do it, you can do it. So... Everything we're doing is live for two hours, way, way, way too early on my Saturday morning here in Japan. But everything will go up on our YouTube channel, Blue Tango Studio, in case you want to catch up or skip around. That's uh, youtube.com, Blue Tango Studio, all one word. But all the links are, you know, down there. So, you know, why two hours, why the morning? Well, I found, like when I did try it writing, uh, helping to set up bluetango.com and everything else, Two hours is about the right amount of time for getting things done. You know, one hour, and by the time you start getting your flow, time's up. And flow's where all the good work comes from. That's one of the reasons offices and companies really suck. Uh, they seem to do everything in their power to steal your flow. You know, you've got emails coming in, phone calls, morning meetings, afternoon meetings, lunch times, taps on the back, fire drills, instant messages. Add to that all of the personal distractions people throw into the mix. You have a smartphone. And it's actually amazing anything gets done. Now, I'll be sacrificing quite a bit of my flow by using the live stream format and taking questions from you guys. You know, I'll be checking my laptop over here. Uh, but I hope I can make up for it. At the very least, uh, knowing you're there will keep my butt in the seat. So I'm not going to be getting up, wandering around, finding snacks, and, you know, making excuses not to do stuff. Uh, but if anything, you know, the fact that I'm not in the perfect state of flow and still getting things done should help boost your cons confidence, uh, because if I'm able to do this with even distractions, you should be able to go even faster. So, uh, when you do get started on something, whether it's making a game, learning a language, you need focus. So, you did remember to turn off the smartphone and bury it under a pile of clothes in the other room. You did tell your family you need two hours of uninterrupted time. You went to the bathroom, you got your water, you ate your breakfast. Get into a routine, you know, where your butt is planted in the seat for two hours and your hands aren't fiddling with anything that's unrelated to what you want to do because once you hear that email chime, even if you don't answer it, it'll destroy your flow and you'll waste the next two hours. Nothing gets done. So, you know, you might catch up a bit, but you'll never achieve what you could have if you set your environment up right. So getting into a routine is very important. So... That gets into the other question. Why am I doing this, you know, at 8 a.m. on Saturday morning when I should be sleeping? Um, 
I'm not a morning person. I like to sleep in. I hate getting up. But when I started writing, I discovered the power of the morning. Morning is the king and the queen of getting things done. Well, you know, of all the people that join, you know, National Novel Writing Month, the people who write in the morning tend to finish, and that includes morning haters like me. Here's why. No matter how inefficient you are in the morning, it's infinitely easier to enforce a routine if you make it in the morning. You choose when your alarm clock goes off. You choose when your day starts. Nothing's come up yet. You haven't been forced to work overtime, you haven't got the call you have to take, you haven't been invited out to the bar by some friends or co-workers, and most important, you haven't already had your head sponge run dry by the day's events. So, even if it takes a little work to wake up early, and a lot of coffee to saturate the head sponge, which is what I was doing while that countdown timer was going, uh, the morning is your time. I can almost guarantee this. Uh, people who get things done, get things done in the morning. Uh, people who get things done in the evening don't get things done. Whether you're making a game, writing, learning a foreign language, if it's truly important to you, you need to wake up early and do it. But, you know, rules are meant to be broken, and there are definitely people out there who can get stuff done in the evening. So, you know, if that's you, you can prove me wrong. Uh, rules, like I said, are made to be broken. But I just wanted to give you a warning and maybe a helpful hint on, you know, how to actually, you know, Get into a routine and get things done because it's really hard to get into a routine in the evening things come up so let's get started if you have any questions as you as i go along send them to me in the twitch chat down there or if you're watching this later on youtube uh, post a comment to the youtube video tweet to b tango on twitter post a comment you know I, i'm going to post these episodes up on bluetango.com with a post so you can post a comment there if you're too shy to ask in public you can private message me on Twitch or send an email to eric at bluetango.com. But if you have a question, someone else out there probably has the same one. Um, and I'll also notice things posted in like the chat and comments a lot faster. So if you, you want an answer, it's probably the, the more efficient way to do it. So let's go in with an assumption. Um, assuming game development is anything like writing or you know, any other project. The first and most important step is to plan, uh, which is what we're going to start doing here. This is the fun part, before things go wrong, before you have to put in the hard work, before you realize something can't be done, sky's still the limit, so don't skip this. It's actually the funnest part. Well, besides, you know, maybe making your millions off of Minecraft or whatever you happen to sell in the end. But do as much planning as you can before diving in. Uh, not only will it help shape your idea into something greater than the thing you wrote on the back of that Taco Bell napkin, there are a lot of side benefits to doing it, especially if you can build it into a routine. Uh, planning focuses, uh, forces you to focus on a few things. Uh, one, you have what needs to be done spelled out, so you don't, you don't waste time on things that aren't important. Uh, nor do you skip or forget things that are important. Uh, three, you know, when you come to work on your game, uh, hopefully in the morning, with a groggy head. Uh, your brain doesn't have to do any heavy lifting. And believe me, at 8 a.m. on Saturday morning, I can't do any lifting. Because, you know, if you have planned this out, you at least know what needs to be done next. You don't have to think about it. Um, planning also prevents the future you from interfering with your vision. If you don't have a plan and you run into a difficult problem, the first instinct is to run. It doesn't feel like running, but it is running. Like, you'll think, well, I can't do it this way, so I'll try this way, I'll try this way, I'll try this way, and eventually it just completely changes what you were trying to do. Uh, you'll justify another easier solution. You'll end up watering down your game. Or worse, you know, if you don't plan, you might actually overbuild something, which is also a problem. You'll spend two months creating the world's most awesome press start screen when you didn't even need a press start screen. So, um, also planning is the key to consistency. Uh, with planning, you can more or less keep all of the details in your head while deciding what goes into your game. If you do this as you go, you might end up with like a Mario platformer on level 1, a Wing Commander space shooter for level 2, etc., which is fine if that's what you wanted, but not fine if it wasn't. Uh, for example, if you're writing, not having a plan or an outline is what creates the big gaping plot holes that take months of hard work to fix, if you can fix them at all. And it creates a lot of work that gets tossed out the window when a few days of outlining or planning in advance could have prevented all that. 
Now, this doesn't mean you need to throw your spontaneity away. The best ideas usually come from it. But with a plan, you can at least judge whether those new ideas fit into your vision or not. Unfortunately, there are some pitfalls to planning. Uh, the biggest is that nothing ever goes according to plan. But that's okay. Uh, having a plan gives you something to change, and I'll describe a way to get around this problem later. Uh, the other big pitfall to planning is sticking to it, uh, even when the world changes. You don't want to do that. You need to have a way to update your plan to reflect what's important, to know what needs changing, what needs to be added or taken away, especially if you have a schedule or a hard deadline. Now, I mentioned how important finishing is. Uh, so your plan should be drawn up in a way that gets you to the finish line as fast as possible. With a novel, a finish line is a first draft. With a game, it's the first thing you can actually play. You want something playable, no matter how ugly. In fact, ugly is actually good. Because then, if it's ugly, you can judge whether the game itself is good or not without graphics or sound to trick you into thinking otherwise. Believe me, it happens everywhere. It's not just a, an indie problem or you know, a self-starter problem, it happens everywhere, publishers, you know, everything, you know, people get tricked by graphics because, you know, graphics are what you're used to seeing, you're used to seeing finished products. So you can, you can kind of fool yourself into thinking you actually have a good game when you don't. So keep it ugly for as long as you can. Saves you trouble later if you want to change something in the game too, you don't have to redraw everything. Um, you know, have you ever gone to a game store and bought a game that looked cool but turned out not so cool? That's exactly the thing you want to avoid with your own games. Uh, you want something playable as soon as possible so you can start improving it. The first draft of something is never what you envisioned, no matter how much you work you put into it. Uh, the first draft of a novel is always really depressing. So you want to get it out of the way ASAP so you can actually get to work making it good. Uh, don't litter your hard disk with half-finished products or projects. Um, in software, uh, this process of making second, third, fourth, fifth drafts is called iteration because you're looping through everything again. And if you want to make something good, you'll need a lot of it. Uh, the best games out there usually have you know, enough time built into that schedule where they finish the game in advance and they start iterating it. Like if you have you know, a beta or an open beta or something, that's what they're doing. They've put the game out there, they're getting your advice, they're putting it all back into the game and making it better. If you just throw the game out there, obviously you don't get all that feedback, you don't see all those things that, you know, people were expecting. So, you know, get to that first playable game as fast as possible. Uh, ironically, you'll actually get something good faster by making something bad faster, uh, as opposed to trying to make something good right from the start. Uh, let me take a drink of water before I dry out like the cactus that's sitting on top of my head. If, if the microphone is too quiet or I'm too loud or something's going on, please let me know. Um, before going any further with planning, though, uh, and introducing a better way to plan, let me give you a little more information on the project I'm making. So, Because this is you know a show about making games, so let's get into that. Uh, my game vision is going to be this. Let me draw it out on my equivalent of a Taco Bell napkin. Let's see. Okay. Horrible, horrible drawing, but everything has to start somewhere. It's it's a Western shooter. Uh, it's a 2D Western shooter that I want to make um, that uses pinball principles. So you fire your gun, you miss what you were trying to shoot, a bullet comes careening off the different background objects, kind of pinging around. You can actually shoot yourself if you're not careful. Enemies doing the same thing, so you've got all these bullets flying everywhere. And you actually get, what I want to do anyway, is you actually get bonus points for the longer that bullet is in the air flying around before it actually hits something. Kind of a weird concept. Hopefully it'll make sense as I go along. Hopefully I can actually, you know, do it. But I'll, do, I'll uh, start drawing up that list. 
of what I need to do and what I want to do later. But, you know, as you can see, any game idea can start with just a single piece of paper. Uh, next, some of the tools I'll be using. Oh, by the way, the, you know, as you can see up there, Project Spaghetti. The reason it's called Project Spaghetti is because, you know, Spaghetti Western. Um, the tools I'll be using. I'll be making this in Yo-Yo Games Game Maker. Um, I have more experience working with Unity and Unreal Engine, but they're definitely overkill for what I want to do, and they're probably too much for this show, at least for Season 1. If you've ever seen the game Gunpoint, or I think the old Spelunky was also made in Game Maker before they, um, before Derek U upgraded it. Yeah, you'll know the kind of game that can be made in Game Maker. Uh, Unity and even Unreal could do the style that I'm trying to make, the 2D, you know, old school style. But it'd be a lot more work, and the goal is to get to, to the finish line as fast as possible. Um, also, there's a price consideration. I want you out there to also feel like you can go out and do this kind of project yourself. So I'm doing what I can to keep my tools free or at least cheap. And, you know, Unreal isn't cheap. Uh, although they've introduced that monthly plan, I think it's a horrible sensation to feel a hand, you know, reaching into your pocket, you know, every month, you know, taking cash from it. Uh, you know, Adobe and all these other places are really starting to jump on that bandwagon, and gee, you wonder why. Because in the long run, you know, you have this tool sitting on your hard disk for months and months and months, they end up making more money than if than back in the day when you just actually just bought it once, even though it cost a lot back then. It's the same thing as, you know, like a, a car or anything else. It, You know, Adobe, Unity, all these software companies are really jumping on this monthly plan thing because it's the equivalent of selling you a lease. You know, you pay every month and month and month and month for the same thing. You know, obviously they're promising updates and everything else. That's fine. It's it's a business model. Uh, there are some advantages to it. Uh, for one, you know, with Photoshop, for example, if you want to use Photoshop for just a month or two to try it out, you know, you don't have to shell out, <coughs> you know, five hundred, six hundred dollars for it. You can just try it for fifty bucks. The only problem is when you start doing that for years and years and years. But you know. In the end, it might sound like it's not that much, but Unreal gets expensive fast um, because you know all that all that monthly fee, all that overhead starts stacking up. Uh, it seems to be the trend now for software, but I hate it, and I'll avoid it where I can. In business, that stuff's called overhead. Most business owners toss and turn at night when they think about it. On top of that, uh, Unreal asks for five percent of everything that you sell. That's that's actually more than fair, because especially if you're making like a first-person shooter based on the Unreal Engine, you know, the, the engine is probably more than 5% of your game, but they're only charging 5%, so that's actually kind of reasonable. But it is a consideration. Um, so if I don't need something as powerful as Unreal in the first place, you know, why should I deal with that extra cost? So, you know, I'm not going for Unreal. Uh, Unity everyone's favorite darling right now, uh, at least avoids the commission, you know, hopefully they don't change that, uh, and it comes as a package, but that package costs, oh god, what is it now, $1,600 or something like that, it's more than $1,000, very cheap, and they don't charge commissions and stuff, so it's very cheap for a game company, you know, if you're a studio, and you're used to paying, you know, whatever it was for Unreal, and commissions and everything else, or worse, you know, hiring a bunch of programmers to make your own engine, or CryEngine or any of the other ones. Unity is actually very cheap, uh, but I don't have a thousand dollars sitting in my wallet to throw at these kind of things, and I don't think you do either, so we're not going to do Unity. Uh, just, you know, word of advice, um, Unity, the stripped down version of Unity is free, and you can always, you know, make most of your project in the stripped down version upgrade later if you decide to. So, that is an option. But, you know, 
Still, Unity is more than we need. I've seen, you know, how you make 2D games in Unity, and it's like, yeah, it's it's still more than I think we need to do a 2D shooter. So uh, that brings us to Game Maker and similar products. Uh, let me see if I can jump to the Game Maker page here. At least show you what this thing is. So I loaded up their website here, uh, yoyogames.com. They're on what looks like Game Maker Studio. 1.3 now, uh, early, as you can see there, early access for 1.4. And obviously my throat is dying because I'm chit-chatting too much, but... Um, you know, you can see all the different kind of games that they're making with it. They've even introduced a marketplace. I'm, you know, obviously Unity has had a big marketplace thing. So, um, you know, Game Maker is probably trying to compete with that a little bit. But let's see. Right now, you know, there's other engines out there that can do simple games like Flash games and things like that for iPhone and everything else, like Game Salad, Construct Two. <coughs> Sorry, still getting over uh, cold. But, uh, you know, why did I choose Game Maker? Because games like Gunpoint, etc. exist. I know Game Maker will do what I want it to do. And it's not that expensive. Uh, the standard version, I think they even made it free. They used to have three versions. Like a, a standard, I uh, no, Like a light version, a standard version, which was kind of cheap, and then a pro version. But I think they made the standard version free. And let's see, the pro version is okay. Yeah, it says uh, Game Maker Studio Professionals nine ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents, so a hundred bucks. Sounds like a lot, but it actually goes on sale quite a bit. You know, they're really good at putting things on sale. Um, the big drawback to Game Maker is that if you want to publish your game on something like the App Store or Android Store, you have to shell out a couple of hundred for that privilege because they have these little modules. You know, the iPhone module, the HTML5 module, the Android module. Each of those start to cost money. But uh, those also go on sale too, so I think you can pick up the Android. When it's on sale, you can pick up the Android module for 50 bucks. The, uh, the App Store one for 100 Kind of pricey, but still, you know, less than Unity. And you don't need those modules to actually make your game, especially if it's just going to be um, on your PC. Uh, let's see. Um, but, you know, once you have, you know, your finished game, it might be worth buying those modules. Maybe your game turned out better than you thought it would, and you want to put it up on the, um, the App Store, the Android Store, you know, doing a little rejiggering to get it to work with the touch screen and everything else. And you can always do that later. So, but, you know, for now you just need the basic engine, standard, whatever. I do have professional because I did pick it up on sale once, but I don't think there's too much it adds, but there's more information on the site. Um, sorry if I do use a feature that's in professional, but, you know, you can find it for 50 bucks or whatever when it goes on sale. Uh, now that we're done with going over that, the tools we'll be using, uh, let's go back to planning. So, how do you plan? You take your Taco Bell napkin with your game idea, and you take another, you know, hopefully larger than this, empty sheet of paper, and you start writing everything you can down. Get all of the ideas out of your system, and if you know how to work with bubble charts or mind maps, it'll help with the next step and with making sure you have everything covered and everything balanced. 
Uh, since you can't see me writing down a list, I'm going to use a free software program called FreeMind as my mind maps, map software so you can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, it's usually more efficient to put things down on paper than to bother with software because you're not limited by what the tool can do. You don't have to worry about learning the tool. You've been using you know, this thing since you were born. It's a hand. You can grab a pen. You can write with it. You can do whatever you want. You can make bubbles. You can make clouds. You can make hearts. You don't have to worry about limitations if you're writing things, which is why you know writing things is actually a lot more efficient than using software programs in general. Uh, but you know, if you use software, it might save you some trouble with copying and pasting. So let me first go to where their website is so you know where to get it. Might be a little hard to read, but uh, that website, it, the software I'll be using for the mind mapping is called FreeMind. It's open source. It's over at freemindsourceforge.net. At least I think it's open source. It's free anyway. So freemindsourceforge.net. <coughs> It'll redirect you to this page that I'm on. They've got the download link there at the top. They've got project news. Basically, you know. If you've seen people drawing circles going out with lines to other circles, that's what it is. I'll have to keep this minimized because the one problem with this open broadcaster software that I'm using is once you show an application window, if it overlaps, it gives you this crazy Inception, the world is breaking down effect. So I'll try to avoid that as much as possible. Yeah, here, let me show you that Inception effect, if I can. Yeah, you can see where it just keeps, you know, everything that overlaps onto that window. So we don't want that. So I will try to do my best to move programs around to avoid that thing, which is why it's you know just small up in the window there so it doesn't overlap open broadcast. So when you first start FreeMind, this is what you get. You get a little circle in the middle, a lot of blank space. Uh, first thing I want to do is my ultimate goal is to make the Project Spaghetti game. So that belongs in the middle. Now, what kind of things do I want in this game? Well, let's see. Bringing up the menu to add a new node is insert. And you can also do it through right-clicking all the time, but it's probably not a good idea. So first I need, well, a cowboy. I need someone who can shoot. And I need bad guys. I need, I said there was going to be the ping pong ball effect, so I need, uh, what should I call them? I'll just use pin, pinball lingo and go with bumpers. Let's see if I can get this. There we go. Let's spread these out a little bit so I have more room. So those bumpers will be, let's add some more to that. There'll be things like, you know, things you'd find in a Wild Wild West movie like barrels. Um, buildings. Uh, 
What else would there be? Cacti. Uh, let's see, what else could we throw in there? Lunch bells. Because you get a nice pink sound effect when it hits that. I guess, you know, enemies will be bumpers too. Maybe some old bones they can bounce off of. But I can add to this later. That would be, you know, a good start anyway. So let's think about our cowboy. Uh, what are the things he can do? Let's put that under actions. He can obviously shoot. I'm going to make it where he can dodge. Move in. Let's keep it specific. He can move in. Do I want eight directions? Yeah, let's do eight directions. We don't want to go too old school with this. Shoot, dodge, move. I guess, let's see. Shoot. This is kind of under shoot, but there's a reload. There's ammo. What are the kind of things will there be? No, nah, that's probably about it for shooting. Uh, also, our cowboy's going to have to look like something, so we're going to need a sprite. In game lingo, sprite is just the, uh, the graphic that's used. And animation. So we're going to need to show this guy doing stuff, like walking. Shooting, dodging. You know, how you organize these categories is up to you. Just try to flesh them out in a way where you won't forget stuff. Now he's shooting. Well, obviously, if he shoots himself or an enemy shoots him, getting hit. And when things go really bad, dying. And the same thing will go to these enemies over here. They will need actions. They will need sprites. And those actions are going to be the same things. They're going to be able to shoot. They are also going to be able to dodge. They are also going to be able to move in eight directions. They are going to need animation, which means they will also be walking. Shooting, dodging, and if you're any good, getting hit. And dying. Now there's one other thing. Since the, the bullets themselves have to show up in the game and do stuff, we're going to have bullets. Those are also going to need a sprite. They are also going to need actions. The uh, sprite. Well, yeah, I guess it would need some animation because we're going to need to show 
that these bullets are speeding up. So maybe it'll be a color change or something like that, but for now we'll put it in animation. Bouncing off of the bumpers. Hitting me. Okay. Oh, uh, what else am I gonna need? I'm gonna need some place for these things to actually take place. <clears throat> so I'm gonna need levels. Uh, one level would probably be, you know, the standard outside of a saloon, so town, maybe an old spooky graveyard, desert, how about a special night level? And to do that, I'm going to need sprites for that, sprites for that. Sprites for that. Yeah, I don't know if it's appropriate to call them sprites. Let's just say Obviously these things will also need, these will actually be sprites. Okay, so we got some levels. What else can we do here? Oh, yes, good point. Uh, tutorials. Thank you. There is definitely an advantage to doing this live. I will definitely need a tutorial. So. Let's see, we'll need to do a tutorial on movement. We need to do a tutorial on the dodging system, bullet rebound system. So, let's see, for that tutorial we'll probably need GUI elements. Whether it's worth putting that under here, let's just do that. Try to give us some more room. See, this is one of the advantages of doing this on paper. You don't have to constantly shift this thing around for room. And yes, a good point. Um, <clears throat> so, <laughs> yeah, I'm getting used to this. Um, 
for those of you on YouTube later, someone in chat pointed out, uh, good old Jamorian, for archive purposes on YouTube, I should actually re read what the people in chat are saying so that you know what I'm responding to. So he said it probably, uh, let's see, do you want to integ integrate tutorial or instructions into early levels, which is what got us into the tutorial thing. And I definitely appreciate that. If anyone else has questions or advice, I definitely appreciate it. And that's what got us into the tutorial part. Uh, we're also going to need text for this, text for this, text for this. Let's see, town background. Well, let's see, we'll probably need particles and things like that. Uh, what a particle is, is like when you see a bullet hit someone and, you know, blood spurts out or sparks fly or things like that. Those are called particles because, you know, as you can imagine, they're just these little twinkly things that you kind of spit out there. They're not really BG or anything else. They're kind of effects. So whether it's blood spurts or uh, sparks or whatever, if we want to make this family-friendly game, I'm, well, you're a cowboy running around town shooting people, so it's probably not going to be that family-friendly. But we'll see. Probably do want to have enough particle on this bouncing and reflecting stuff, too. And we're going to want some particles when our cowboy shoots. You know what? We probably want particles for when they're walking around town because it's awfully dusty back in the Wild West. And probably for dodging too, because that's going to kick up a lot of dust. Actually, I should put it up here. It makes more sense to go over there. We want to see the gun going off. We want to see the dust kicking up when the enemies dodge. We want to see the dust kicking up when they're walking around. And since it's so dusty, let's have this guy cough once in a while. Eh, that shouldn't be an action, really. It should be an animation. Well, actually, if you're not moving, that's called an idle animation. Let's do that. Cough. What else would a cowboy do? Probably scratch himself. Uh, I don't know, do we want this cowboy to start singing? Probably not. Eh, I'll leave it at that. Coughing and scratching himself and then just... general. Because he's not going to always be coughing and scratching himself. Barrels, sprites... I guess you're going to need... Particles coming off of this when it reflects. So actually, reflect the bullet and particles coming off of that. So we're going to need that for these things too. And see, this is where doing this mind map is helpful, because by doing it, I've actually realized something else I've forgotten. And I will get to that once I fill these in.
This is going to be a very quiet game if I don't add something important, which is sound and music. First, let's do music. Hmm. Okay, well, I guess that's good enough. This mind map is starting to actually look like spaghetti as well. That's, that's way too small. Okay, I'll just keep scrolling around then. So for music, we'll need title screen music, game over music, uh, town level music, and you can put this under like you know levels or whatever. But I kind of thought it would be helpful to put music in its own category because, you know, title screens and game overs don't really fit anywhere else. Maybe if you have a GUI category, it'd fit under there, but we can always reorganize these things later. So we've also got our graveyard, level, music, our desert, level, music, our night, level, music, maybe some pause music if someone wants to pause the game. And that also reminds me of menus. You've got your title screen. You've got your game over screen. You've got your pause screen. Not sure if I'll need it. Meh, you probably will need it. An option screen so you can adjust sound and everything else. Uh, whether it's worth doing or not, an opening movie. Yeah, let's go ahead and put it in. Let's call them demos. And we can always decide later on that we, this game's not going to need this stuff, but better to list it all out while we can. Oh, well, that's inconvenient. <laughs> okay. Well, fine. I'll put it there. Well, yeah, I guess another important demo would be the ending. You know, if we really wanted to go old school with this, you would just have, you know, over here in the menu. Well, not really the menu, but let's call this GUI stuff. Let's rename that. I mean, you would have like a GUI thing with like your congratulations, you are, you are won the game or whatever you would have if you were playing an old Japanese game. But, you know, maybe we'll go fancy and actually have, you know, a character moving and doing stuff to reward a uh, player for finishing the game. If we even want to have the game finishable, maybe it's just one of those old school games where it just keeps repeating and getting more and more difficult. But I'll put it out there for now as a possibility. I can keep those priorities low. I'll explain that later. I should probably save this. Good habit to get into. So that we don't have to go through all of this again. So we've got our cowboy. We've got what he does. We've got the sprite animation on him. Walking, shooting, dodging, getting hit, dying, idle motions. He can shoot, he can reload. That's I think that's fine. Barrels. Fine. Yeah, okay, this is where I remembered the thing but forgot to add it. In addition to particles, we are going to want sound effects when that bullet hits because otherwise the players aren't going to understand what is going on. through the air, yeah, probably need a bullet whizzing by sound effect. I 
Actually, that's a good point. Um, if the bullet comes close to the player, we probably want a sound effect for that to make it actually sound like bullets are flying. So, uh, fly close to player. I think that's how that works. No? Let's just do this the easy way. So the bullet can speed up. Uh, the speed up is after a bounce, so that sound effect is covered by the bounce. The particles are covered by the bounce. Don't really need that. Uh, whizzing by, hitting people, that's probably enough for the bullet. Well, actually, we probably do need particles for when it's flying through the air, so you can see this bullet. You know, if this game does end up being on, um, you know, an iPhone or something like that, it's going to be kind of small. So just seeing this tiny little bullet going back and forth across the screen is going to be a little difficult. So we probably want a little trail of something coming off of it. Bad guy walking, shooting, etc. Yeah, I guess I want to put it on actions. So obviously shooting is going to have a sound effect. Dodging is probably going to have a sound effect. Maybe he grunts. Or maybe you just hear him hitting the sand. I don't know how I'm going to do that. Maybe I'll just pick up some sand and start ruffling it in front of the microphone. I'm sure this game will test my foley skills and my imagination. Obviously moving across the dirt is going to take some sound. And the player needs the same things. Reload sound effect. Shooting, sound effect, dodging, sound effect, moving, sound effect. Okay, we've got our bad guys. I wonder, do they need to reload too? Yeah, let's make, make sure they have to reload too. Let's make this game fair. And reload just had... Uh, it came off the shoot and it had a sound effect. So actually, let's put it up here. So we've got moving, dodging, shooting for the bad guys. We've got all their animation stuff. <clears throat> we've got the bullet. Let's see if I can move this out a little bit more. We've got the bullet, sprite, animation, speeding up, flying through the air, the things it can do. We've got the levels, which is probably just an image. Okay, well, yeah, something else that's important. We're going to need parameters for the cowboy. Like lives, if the, if the game has lives, which we probably want. We're going to want a score. Uh, maybe this doesn't belong with the cowboy. Let's move it to GUI. And we'll call this the HUD. So like in Halo and games like that, when you see, you know, your shield, you know, everything that you see on the screen that's not the game itself is basically the HUD. So we'll have lives. We will have score. Maybe we'll have a high score. You know, if I really can figure out the networking stuff, I can have leaderboards. But I'll make that a low priority thing because I want to get the game done first before adding all the bells and whistles. But it's good to keep it keep track of it. So live score, high score, I don't know. let's see. You want to know how many bullets you have left if you're gonna have to reload, so you know. This doesn't necessarily have to be bullets at the top of the screen. It could be, you know, a gun at the bottom with a revolving 
you know, cylinder, or it can be some other kind of expression, but we can figure that out when we take on that task. So we've got music, sound effects. One helpful thing to do when you're planning this, something that I've been doing a lot lately, is to try to, you know, imagine yourself in the game, you know, close your eyes, picture yourself playing the game, and see what comes up. So, for example, you know, close my eyes and start thinking about it. So I fire up the game, I get to a title screen, I press start, you know, or whatever the button is going to be, space bar, enter, tapping the screen. So I'm going to need that. People want to pause and quit, so quick control. Oh, we probably want to let people quit from the main menu so they don't have to control alt delete out of this thing. <clears throat> Options we probably want. Music sound level. Sound effects. Sound level. F2, I'll have to remember that. Oh, what else? Maybe brightness. I don't know if I want to fiddle with resolution. That sounds like a pretty high-end feature for what I want to be doing, but let's just put it in there. So, music sound level, sound effects, brightness. Oh, what else can we throw in there? Well, that's probably about it. So oh, bad guys, player. All right, going back to the game. We hit space or whatever it is to start the game. Player walks out. We're gonna need that. Starting a level animation. Finishing a level animation. So maybe he comes, you know, out of out of the saloon, or maybe walks onto the screen. And when he's done, maybe he walks off the screen or he you know, holds his gun up in the air and starts firing like a crazy cowboy. Okay, so we got this guy walking out. You know, he's kicking up dust because that's all part of the walking thing. Uh, and then, let's see. Enemies start to appear. We've got the bad guys. Action, shooting, dodging, moving. Well, let's see. I probably want to have them also... Yeah, I don't think they need a special start animation. It'll just be part of walking. They'll come out, kick up some dust, sh start shooting at the player. The bullet comes out. Let's look at the bullet. Bullet gets fired. Whizzes by the player, makes some sound, bounces off things. Multiplier. Yeah, let's see. That's probably going to be in the HUD. Score multiplier. So if the bullet keeps bouncing off, maybe it's times 2, times 3, times 4, times 5, times 6, and then it hits someone, and then you get all those points. So let's see, you fire the bullet, it bounces around, causing particles to happen, sound effects to happen, finally hits the enemy, he does his dying animation. Let's see, actually we probably need to have, under these levels, An enemy pattern because it's not just going to be one guy coming out that you shoot and move on to the next level we probably want to have either a system that you know randomly puts enemies out there or a system that keeps them coming out in a certain pattern to create difficulty levels yeah let's see do we want difficulty levels now nah, we'll make difficulty levels go up as you go through but that's going to be a parameter So let's create a new one, a new main topic called system, and add difficulty to that. What else can we add to system? Well, let's see. Although we have it in GUI, 
you know, we have over here, we have live score, high score bullets. That's nice to actually display them, but we need the variables behind them. So let's go ahead and put those here too. So these are going to be all the variables. Variables are like, you know, you know, algebra X, Y, Z, you know, things you put numbers in. Uh, high score. Number of bullets. Score multiplier. These things will be really easy to set up, but we just want to put these here so we don't forget about them. So we've got the enemy patterns. Okay, so you've got different enemies coming out in different patterns. I would imagine that it would get kind of boring if we did enemies the exact same way every time, so we probably want randomness, but we also want to come up with a system where we don't, you know, create some kind of horrible randomness where just, you know, by by chance or by whatever timers in your computer that the randomness uses, you know, six billion enemies come out and just flood you even though it's the first level. So we probably want, you know, little modifiers on that. But we can figure that out when we get to it. Uh, let's see, we got barrel sprites, actions, building. Okay, well, getting back to it, we've got enemies coming out. You shoot them, you clear the level, the player does his victory animation. You fade out, fade into the next level. Yeah, maybe we want a level manager. Oh, let's see. Level manager, fade out, fade in. Fade out and get the levels. You have the difficulty, I guess that would be. You need to keep track of the level that the player's on. I'll be right back. I'm going to grab some water. And if you do think of something else that belongs in this list, feel free to throw it in the chat. But I will be back really quick. I just don't want my voice to give out on you. <laughs> 